Permutations, gents, if you recall, permutations are arrangements of objects where the order does matter. Okay, so like organizing letters to make unique words, as opposed to combinations with just selecting just a group of letters and I don't really care about their order. Uh, so today we're gonna to be looking at permutations with restrictions and looking at the various types of restrictions you can be assessed on and ways to deal with them. So first of all, uh, we've got the question, how many arrangements of the word Darwin begin and end with a vowel? So if you've got this or you've got a situation where you're arranging students on a seat or something and someone has to sit at the front, someone has to sit at the end. Anytime you've got kind of that system going on, I recommend using that box method where we draw all the boxes with how many options we have. So in Darwin, we have D-A-R-W-I-N, that's six spots. So question one, draw our six boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six, six even boxes and uh, they have to begin and end with a vowel. So first of all, let's do the begin. We have the vowels A and I only, right? So when I'm starting off this word, I have two possible options. So I pop the two in and they have to end with a vowel. Remember, I don't care which vowel is at the start, which one's at the end. I just know I've got two options for the start, but if I've used one up at the start, I now only have one vowel left over. So at the end, I've only got a one. And then in the middle, I don't care. I can be the rest of the consonants, the D, the R, the W, and the N. So my first consonant, I have four choices. My next consonant, I have three choices, then two choices, then one choice. So once you've got this set up, you just multiply them through. So we've got two fours are eight, three eights are 24, double that's 48. Timesing by one is irrelevant. So we end up getting two times four times three times two which is 48, if my math was correct. 48 ways to arrange Darwin. First restriction is stuff in particular spots. You put them in first and then fill out the rest. So B, using the digits 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 without repetition, how many odd four digit numbers? Okay, so the four digit number is gonna be how many boxes we've got. Even though we've got six digits there, we've only got four digit number. And the restriction on this number is, well, first of all, without repetition, but the main restriction is that the number is odd. So an odd number can only end, in this case, with a one, a three, or a five. So we have to place the odd number first at the end. Three options. Uh, there's, I guess, sort of one more uh, restriction in that you can't put a zero at the start because then it wouldn't be a four digit number. I guess it'd be a three digit number. So when we're actually looking at this, keeping in mind, we've used one of one, three and five. So one of them is gone and we can't use zero. So we can use uh, two of the odds, whatever's left and then two and four. So we've only got four options to start with. Gets tricky though, because we can't just go three, two because in the second digit, we can use zero. Yeah, so we've used one of the odds, we've used another number. We've got four again, and now it's three. So four, four, three, three. So we've got four times four, times three, times three. 16 times nine is probably 144. Give or take zero, plus or minus zero. So uh, again, you've got to think through some of these. And it's not there's not necessarily like a formula you can just plug numbers into to get the answer. You have to like, I guess, work your way through it logically. These are very easy to make mistakes on. So even though they can be very easy in the test, make sure you're taking the time you should spend on these kinds of questions. Um, <clears throat> right, so 